Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel on Saturday the 10th of February 2024 currently 11.33pm in the evening on the 10th of February 2024 right, I'm going to start off this video by saying remember guys anyone bully you or threaten you you should always gather evidence okay, of that person threatening you we're sending in threatening messages or voice messages to you. Always remember, keep that as evidence. Do not delete it, because if you delete it, it won't look good. But with me, anyone who threatened me or anything like that, I always keep evidence of it. I always keep the log of it. And I always report it to the police. For my own safety, because my safety comes first before anything else. And if I feel like um, my life is at risk because of this dickhead, Belen threatening me because you think he's better off than everyone else because and that I won't say too much but you think he's better than anyone else well he ain't he ain't a man he's a boy threatening me like that who the hell you think he is he don't know who the fuck he's messing with here bruv trust me it won't end well if anyone bully me or threaten me it won't end well because you know what I'm a better man and I'm I'm a better person and you will be reported to the police because that's how I deal with things. I'm a man. Anyone bully me, you be reported to the police, bruv. Okay? You get that, fam? Yeah? You threaten me, you be reported to the police. So don't fucking try it with me, yeah? Because it won't end well. You be reported to the police. Because I hate bullies out there in this world. And like I say, bullies get what they deserve. And how I've been brought up is I treat people with respect. How I want to be treated in life. So I treat people with respect and kindness. And I give people the same energy and same respect that they give me. It's a two-way thing in this world, bruv. Make time for people who make time for you. And also treat people the same way they treat you. So if that person treating you like shit, you treat them the same way. But with me, if anyone dares threaten me, I will repeat, you dare threaten me, then it's better, please, to turn up at your door. Because I tell you now, it won't end well. With anyone threatening me, it won't end well. Because you will see the police outside your front door and you will be arrested for threatening behaviour. So bring it on, bruv. Because I ain't scared of you, bruv. So bring it on and you'll be reported to the police. Because I ain't scared of you. Just because you think you're better than everyone else, you're not. You're weak in the head, bruv. So get your facts right, yeah? Druggy. So yeah, and piss head you are. So get your facts right. But I won't stand up to bullies in this world. So you will be reported to the police. You will not be allowed near me. If you dare come near me or anything, you will be arrested. You will. Because threatening behaviour, I'm not having it. I treat people with respect. So if any bullies threaten me, you'll be reported to the police. So I spoke to the manager on Friday and he told me, if this guy threaten me again, then I've got every right to report him to the police and he will be arrested. Because I've got evidence of how many times he has reported me. And that can be used against him in court. And he will, might be kicked out of this place if he threatened me anymore. But that's what the manager said to me on Friday when I got back from my wife. He told me if this guy carry on threatening me and they get arrested by the police, he will be kicked out of this place where I'm living for my own safety. And he will be banned from this place. And maybe... Um, um, what is it called? A what? Not a warrant. It be um, he won't be allowed to enter in this area for my own safety. So, if he want to go down that road, he can bring it on. I ain't scared of him because he's the one who's gonna lose out, and it's gonna affect him. So, bring it on, bruv. I ain't scared of you because if you want to lose your flat, carry on threatening me, and you'll be arrested by the police. And like the manager said, you'll be kicked out of this place. So, you be the one who'd be losing out. So yeah, thought I'd get out of my chest, guys, to say that. So right, basically everyone, just to let you know, I enjoy my time on Noah White. It was a nice to have a four-night break from this place, especially with everything that's going on at the moment at where I live. I won't say where I sadly live, but I do know I live in sport of living, and uh, it does get stressful at times when someone is threatening me. So, but I said my piece, and yeah. That person is going to get what's coming for him if he threatened me one more time. 
The police will be turning up at his door and he may be kicked out of this place. And it be his own fault. So, I got nothing to lose. He have. So, I'm not bothered about it. So yeah, our white was really good. My mum and the rest was right. Of course, it was hard. Can't believe it's been 15 years without my mum, but I'm glad I was with my friend Dean and Amanda, of course. They was there for me for my mum anniversary. So thank you, Dean and Amanda, for inviting me over for my difficult time. Of course, I really enjoy myself having a break from this place and spending time with you lot, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let you know, guys, I'm back to doing day shifts again at McDonald's, of course. So yeah, it's all going good. It was that work yesterday. It was full on yesterday, the busiest Friday I ever experienced that work. I have my second pint of water today, no, this evening. I had two glasses this morning and two glasses this evening. So, yeah, keep them very hydrated. But we will get to that while I'm drinking water a little bit later on in this vlog. So, stay tuned. So, yeah, work been good yesterday. I was working. Um, the moment I got in, it was full on, boom, boom, boom. It was, it was mental, crazy. We had 120 people. 120 people of staff in the kitchen and I I didn't realise how busy it get in the day shift because I've been doing night shift for about a month or two now at McDonald's and they only be like four of us on that night shift but going back to day shift I forget how busy it is in the kitchen it is mega 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 busy it is like that's a little screw past people like that it's really irritating but it's right in the day, what do you expect? But it was good. And um, we went, f the chips, the fries that I had to keep topping up the boxes. So we got one, one box here, another box here, and um, we get the big um, 4X box, like box about that big. There were four bags of fries in. I have to empty all that in one um, box here, and I have to empty another four on that side. We went about through 12 boxes of loads yesterday in the space of two, in the space not of two, in the space of that four hours, we must have gone through at least 60 boxes of chips and nuggets yesterday. It was so busy. I was in the kitchen, one minute in the kitchen, next minute I was in the fucking freezer of minus 10 degrees it is in the freezer. We would keep all the meat and everything fierce, all frozen in minus 10. So I was in now, in now, in now. It was that cold in the freezer. Going in there and then coming out. Blah, it's steaming up because it's really warm in the kitchen. And also, on top of my job that I was doing, like, with the kitchen port, like, cleaning, like, holding down all the stuff, all the, stuff, all the grease, everything, putting it in dishwasher, doing the mop in the washing machine, all the cloth you wipe down the side of, in the washing machine, Mopping the floor as well, emptying all the bins, um, stocking it on this shape, pudding, McFlurries, also on chips as well, going outside in the backyard to empty all the big bins, do the recycling, go upstairs, empty the bins upstairs, wipe down the floor upstairs where everyone sit, wipe down the table, go and sit the staff room, wipe down the table as well, wipe the floor there, sweep up the floor, Go in the bathroom, clean the toilet, and all that. And did wins, do that. Then after that, by the time I done all that, it was three o'clock. I went on my lunch break, forty-five minute lunch break. So I went on my break about, I think quarter past three. Yeah, quarter past three. I went on my lunch break, and then I went back to work at ten to four. Then from ten to four to seven o'clock, it was full on again. Busy, 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 busy. By the time it got to five o'clock to so so from half four till seven. It was full on busy. Like, it was really busy. And um, literally, I finished 15 minutes before 7 o'clock because it was that busy. I'd done everything I needed. And I checked, you always have to check with the manager to see if, it, okay, you, you cannot just leave work bang on 7 o'clock when you meant to finish. You leave when the manager tells you to finish. That's how it worked. In my head, you thought I thought I could just leave when your time is up. No. You leave when the manager say. So I went to the manager. I said, 
I went up and he said, sir, I can't talk right now. It's very busy, as you can see. I said, yeah, I know it's busy, but it's basically 10 minutes to 7. Um, I've pretty much done everything I needed to do. That is on my duty to do. Um, I said to him, do you need me here longer or is it okay to leave? If you want me to stay longer, I don't mind as it is busy. So he asked, he said to me, you can leave if you want. So I said, okay, thank you. But I just said to them, if you want me to stay on the extra half hour or hour, I don't mind as it's busy. He said, suck to do, Stuart, but we don't want you to go over your hours because you're on benefits. So, yeah. So, but I said to them, I said, I don't mind. So, but I left at 10 to 7, got home about quarter past 7 and uh, chilled. But my legs, my calf, my feet was throbbing. And it was achy when I stretched my leg out like that. I put my toes like that. I could hear my calf stretching. That felt so good after being on your feet for eight hours nonstop. Oh, you will know the feeling if you work eight hours on your feet and legs without sitting down. It is for one. It is. After doing night shift for four hours, going back to eight hour shift, yeah, with a shot to the system yesterday. I went. I weren't uh, prepared for it. And I wouldn't say that this, but I did feel a bit claustrophobic yesterday on how busy it was in the kitchen. There weren't much room to move, you know. It was pretty busy, you know. Yeah, people who don't know, I do get claustrophobic in like tight spaces and that. And when it's like really busy, I do get claustrophobic and that. And my anxiety does hit a roof. People will understand this if, you, if you've got ADHD and also the issue dyslexic. it. No, so if you get paranoia as well, you will understand what it's like with, with me, with my condition. And if people don't understand what ADHD is, go fucking look it up on the internet, then you will understand more about me and what my mood swings are like and all that with ADHD and my sleep pattern is with my ADHD and that and the way I think and I process things slower than other people. And also I forget things as well quite a lot, what isn't good. But that's the way I am, and I don't let that affect my life. So, that's, yeah. So, but on the main thing is we need to talk about, that is on the serious note, that no, never been spoken on this YouTube channel. But, because all you lot are like friends and family on here, you know me for quite a long time, and been with me on this journey quite a long time, um, I'm going to say, you know, on... Saturday, the 7th of February, 2009, early hours of Saturday morning, 2009, on the 7th of February, at 2 in the morning, I sadly lost my mum due to heart attack. Um, she already had two heart attacks when I was at home with her. And then December the 12th, 2008, I sadly left my mum and got put into care on December the 12th, 2008. That was, that was hard, I will admit, that was hard. Saying goodbye to my mum and knowing that I'm not going to be living with her for a long time until I was 18. But that never got to happen, did it? Sadly, but, so, my mum knew she didn't have long left. And I'm really grateful to my mum. And I love her so much and I miss her like fucking mad. And I'm grateful for my mum putting me in care because that's the best ever I could have asked for, best outcome. Because if it weren't for my mum putting me in care, it's sad to say this, um, I don't think I'd be a person who I am now if it weren't for my mum putting me in care. Put it that way. Um, I've gone through a lot over the years. I have, um, but yeah, if it weren't for my mum putting me in care on December the 12th, 2008, I wouldn't be a nice human being who I am now, or will I, I don't know, um, who would have known, but I'm grateful for my mum putting me in care, because it was the best outcome, you know, being in care taught me a lot. I matured and everything and 
I've grown up to being a lovely person, a lovely young man, outgrowing, I treat people with respect, and I make time for people who make time for me, and I always treat people with the same respect I want to be treated. Kindness, love, and being respectful, of course. Um, so I went into care December the 12th, 2008, and who would have known two months later that I would have lost my mum? I do not wish that on anyone, guys. I really do not. The worst fucking pain you can go through losing a loved one. It really is. Especially your mother. It fucking kills in here. It like a stabbing pain. It kills a lot. You know, I wish every single day that she was here. I really do. I miss her hugs. I miss her kisses. I miss her smell. I just miss her so much. Life isn't the same without her. It really isn't. So, it is hard. But yeah, I went in care December the 8th, 2009. Uh, December the 12th, 2008, I went into care. And then February the 7th, 2009, only hours of Saturday morning at 2 a.m., she sadly passed away. So then, due to a heart attack. So she knew she didn't have long left. So I'm grateful to my mum that. She put me into care because she knew she didn't have long left. She knew she went well and she didn't want me to see that. But sadly, my blood brother, Anthony, he was there and seen it all happen when our mum died. It's the worst pain to think about how she died. Um, especially what the paramedic tried doing for an hour. They tried doing CPR. They did for an hour. Tried saving her. No, couldn't. She was pronounced dead at the scene. And then later on that day, about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, on February the 7th, I had my sister and my auntie and my cousin came over from Bogdan and Regis. Everyone else went to school. I didn't. I got up at 8 in the morning expecting to get ready to go to school. No, nope, I did a, a knock at the door. The care was coming and said, Stuart, you're not going to school today and you probably won't be going to school for the next two weeks or so. And that when... It hit me, it did. That when it really fucking hit me, that I knew something was up. I asked my care, I said, why am I not going to school? What's happened? Is mum dead? They kept telling me, Stuart, no, mum isn't dead. Mum isn't dead. But your auntie and your cousin and your sister are coming to see you. And I'm like thinking, why not my mum? You know when you get a gut feeling, you know something is up? I had it. No way go with my gut instant, always. The best thing for you. Listen to your gut. So that happened. They came and they said to me, Stuart, we're sorry, but early hours of this morning, that two in the morning, we had a phone call from the paramedic saying that your mum our mum sadly passed away due to your heart attack. So sad, you know, it's, it kills me, you know, it really does. So, that day just was, I didn't believe it, but they told me it was, it was hard. I was sitting there going to my sister and my auntie and cousin. I was like, you're fucking kidding me, this is not real. She probably gone to Sharma Sheikh in Egypt without telling anyone. That what I kept thinking, because she always go to Sharma Sheikh in Egypt, at her favourite spot, where she always used to go on holiday. Um, she used to go there for three weeks, all inclusive. So, that what I thought, until I went back to our house, went back to my mum's house where I lived with her, and that was the first time going back there since I left in December 2008. And that was fucking hard. That was walking in the house, no, and last time I was in that house was with my mum. 
I'm going back to knowing that she's weren't that she weren't there. Her smell was. Um, her perfume was there. Her clothes were there, but she wasn't there in person, and that was the fucking hardest thing ever. Until a week later, I went to the funeral. All my family there. I was there with my carers from the care home I was at. I had the worst day of my life. I remember seeing the coffin come along. I was just there going, this is fucking not real. This is not real. I don't believe she's in there. The coffin came in. They laid it on the thing that they do. I went up and I, not like that, went, Mum, you in there? Mum, you in there? No answer. When I was only nine years old back then, and you don't really understand death when you're at age, do you? Um, so me there thinking, no answer. So nothing. Sat down next to my auntie. My sister, I was in the middle of my sister, my cousin and my auntie, and my um, brother, Jonathan, and Anthony. Um, I was all, we were all sat in the row, and my carers were behind. Um, and uh, people going up doing speeches about mum and all that. Um, I couldn't go up. Um, it was too hard for me to go up. I was that young. And it was too, it was too difficult for me to go out and say a speech. It was, really was, it, it was heartbreaking. And I remember, she got committed at horse, so the curtain closed, a certain song came on by Leona Lewis, that me and my mum used to listen to, called Run. If you know that song, Run, by Le- Leona Lewis, you will know, that my mum's favourite song. And also my mum's favourite song is Braveheart as well. So we used to listen to that, Leona Lewis one. And also we used to listen to Braveheart. Those two songs came on. And that when I fucking let it go. I fucking poured my eyes out. I was crying so much that I got told that I was going bright red in my face. I was crying that hard. Of course, as you would expect, even a fucking mum. At that age, I was going bright bright red. Like my auntie in that same street. Come on breathe at how bad it was for me and then I went back we went to a pub had dinner they had food drink and we sat together and I left my family and all that about 8 o'clock at night and then back back home to the care home and the carer said to me straight you're not sleeping on your own we're going to sleep with you you can sleep downstairs on the sofa and we sleep with you help you get through it and that was the worst pain ever at even knowing the reality hit me knowing that she was gone forever literally forever I will never get to see her I will never get to give her her glory kiss but I know she always looking down on me when the sun is shining that why I love the sun when the sun out I'm happy because I know when the sun out she's happy and looking down on me when it's raining or cloudy I'm depressed and lonely and no damn of course, so yeah, a bit of update for you about my life and my childhood. I'm going to be a bit more honest in this YouTube vlog. I know it's personal, but I want to be more honest with you guys so you get to know me more and understand what I've been through. But I tell you now, guys, I do not wish it on anyone to lose a loved one. This is why I say make time for people, all right? Make time for your loved ones, no matter what. If you have an argument or fall out with your family, always sort it out there and then. You never know when the last time you ever see them. And make time for people who make time for you, yeah? Because life is too short, you could die tomorrow. You could die in your sleep. That's the reality of life. You don't. Time doesn't stop for you. Um, you just have to make the most of it every day. And yeah, uh, get through it, you know? You really have to. It's, it's hard. I'm on night. I can go out when we're talking about depression stuff. It's hard, but that's why I say live your life to the fullest every single day with no regrets and enjoy life to the fullest, you know, because you just don't know when you're going to go. And um, this is why I want to go on holiday, how much holidays I want in life, I want to go on how many holidays I can afford, because you just don't know.
Uh, sorry that I'm getting a bit upset guys, it's a really personal and upsetting topic to talk about but I wanted to explain what I've been through, okay, so, but yeah, this is why I want to go on so many holidays and make new memories and bring you guys content on my YouTube video because life is too short and I'm 25 years old now and you just don't know how long you got left, you know, in this world. Especially with everything that's going on in this world at the moment, it's crazy, you know. That's why I say just live your life to the fullest with no regret. Always be there for your loved ones and always say love you to your friends, your family. Always give them a hat, hug. Always be kind to each other because you just don't know. You could go to sleep tonight and not wake up tomorrow. It's hard to think. That it really is when you really think about it that bad it is that's a reality you could go you just don't know what can happen you just don't know um i know you can be fit and healthy and you can still get heart attack and just drop dead like that why it's important to always see your loved ones no matter what going on in your life always make time for people no matter what Always say love you to your friends. Give them a hug. And your family. Always meet up with your friends and family. No matter what. Always call your loved ones up and your friends. Make time for them. Because you just don't know what will happen. Um, yeah. And bullies get what they deserve. And don't make time for bullies in this world. Of course. Because bullies get what coming for them in a day. Like they'd be reported to the police. Might I say. So that what happened to bullies. Anyone bully me or threaten me, you just be reported to the police. And I would take evidence, video evidence of you threatening me. So that can be used against you in court. So that what happened. Cool. But yeah, let you know. A bit update as well about my health. I went for my liver appointment, blood test. Uh, another thing, uh, I've done a sample. I can't say what sample I did, but I've done a sample. It not nice, it a bit disgusting, but I have to do it for my health because my health is the most important thing to me. As I do have a problem with my health, I am a board. I'm borderline. Um, my health is at borderline. Um, my liver is borderline, not great. Um, not good. Not a result I wanted to hear back from my liver appointment from two weeks ago. To know that my liver is borderline. My blood cell is like getting blood clots softened up here. Um, and that were a bit large as well. So to do with my blood vessel clocking up, not good. It's kind of borderline, but this is why I've got a big a hospital appointment. A big specialist coming down from London on the 8th of March at the Royal Sussex Hospital in Brighton. That one going over to Brighton. I've got a liver appointment again and an MI scan also on that day probably. At 11 in the morning, I got my liver scan, and hopefully they said they said to me they would try fitting the MI scan on that day as well. So yeah, the big special coming down to check on Sutton because Sutton is borderline with my health, with my liver. So that's a bit of shock to the system. This is why I'm trying to change my life habits around. This is why I'm trying to cut out sugary stuff, sugary drink. I'm trying to drink more water and have one fizzy drink a day and do more exercise. I'm going to start doing more as well. Also, I'm trying to change my food habits as well. Because I used to just live on tuna pasta every single day. I have been, so now I'm trying to change that up as well. Three nights, I'm trying to eat gammon, uh, sweet potato chips and mixed veg. Three days of a week. And then another three days, chicken and rice. So I know I'll start out have that. Also, I'm going to try to eat more vegetable, more fruit and all that. Of course, I try to get out doing more exercise as well. Try to lose weight. So I'm trying my hardest to um, look after my health a bit more. So yeah, it's not good what's been going on. But yeah, it's only 45 days to go now until my holiday because now we are three minutes past midnight on Sunday early hours of Sunday morning on the 11th of February 2024. So, yeah, that's a bit of update about my life, guys. So, yeah, sorry, um, 
it been quite depressing this vlog i think this is the most uh honest and review and about my life and how my life childhood was and all that uh so yeah yeah i was brought up in care um but sadly my blood brother anthony um it's no longer my brother anymore um I can't go into too much detail because I can't say at why he's not my brother anymore. But put it this way, I'm not going to see him ever again for what he did, okay? To do with drugs. Hence why he's not my blood brother anymore because I have disowned him for that reason, for what he did. Put it this way, he done, he's, does drugs you to do crack cocaine, cannabis, weed and all that he does. But he done something to someone and um I disown him now because he's in prison for life, put it that way. Okay, for what he did. So just say that. So yeah, I have quite a mess up life to be honest. Uh everything just went downhill, you know. To be honest. Sent my Blood brother went to prison for life for what he did. Um, I'm not talking to my auntie now, I'm not talking to my sister now, or my cousin, they all turned against me for a reason. It's sad, but at least I've got new family that are Dean and Amanda and Benji and Tom. They are my new family now. They are. They've been there for me for three years. They they make time to see me, they make effort come see me, they talk to me every single day, they FaceTime me up every day, they honest with me, they speak the truth to me, they try to help me to be a better person. So, dear Amanda, I'm very, very thankful for you being there like a the second mum and dad to me, because you are like a second mum and dad to me. I look up to you like you are my mum and dad, my second mum and dad, like a second family. I mean that, I really do. And for people who don't know that, friends can become family. And I believe that it does, and it has happened, because I've been friends with Amanda and Dean for three years this month. has marked three years of friendship with Dean and Amanda, and it's been a fucking brilliant three years. Um, they've been there more than my family have, more than my brother, Jonathan. They've been there more than he has, and my auntie, and my cousin, and my sister. My friend, Dean and Amanda, from my wife, has been there more than my family have, so... Dean and Amanda has become my new family. It's weird saying that, but it's feel good saying that. And Dean and Amanda, you are like a second mum and dad to me. You really are. And Benji and Tom are like a brother to me. So I thought I'd let you know that you are. And um, yeah, I'm grateful for you lot coming into my life. Literally, I look up to you. You lot like second mum and dad and brother you lot are at why every time i come over to you guys i feel like i'm at home with you guys i really do um so yeah sorry guys that this is not my normal video i do but i don't know what has hit me today but i've just been thinking about a lot of things recently i haven't had time to process things recently because i've been really busy while i was over and all right of course, of course, Amanda. Um, but yeah, seventh February, marked fifteen years since I lost my mum. Can't believe it, you know. I lost my mum fifteen years ago. It's hard, man. It's hard to come to terms to know every day. I'm not going to see her, you know. It's hard. It really is. I miss her so fucking much. I would do anything to have her back here right now. I really do. But I know she's looking down on me and she's always with me in here. Always. So I love you, Mum, and miss you. I'm rest in peace. You're always in my heart every single day, no matter what. I just miss her so much. Alright guys, I'm going to end this vlog, um, 
So I hope you enjoyed this vlog and uh, thank you guys for 1,353 subscribers. Let's try and surpass 2,000 subscribers this year, please. Um, also, please go and subscribe to my mate David Evans. YouTube channel, please. Crazy music. And then now my brother, please, of course. And, uh, but, you know, David and Izzy are doing good for themselves. They both got their self a job. And all that, I think Izzy is working as a working in the bar. So and I think when I heard from her last, I spoke to David two days ago. He's working as an Amazon driver now, Monday to Friday, normal shift. Nine to five, so he's doing good for himself. So that's good. Harry, the first one tour is doing good. He's still playing his music and doing YouTube videos for his music channel. So he's doing good for himself, of course. He's still playing at Sunset Land on Wednesday afternoon from half four to half six on Wednesday afternoon at Sunset Land in first one tour. And Thursday from half seven to half nine, he's playing in the old town. So, um, yeah, he's still, he's still doing his music, so I cannot wait to see my mate Harry in 45 days and do some more filming for him for his music channel as well, of course. So it's about to see him on my YouTube channel as well soon, of course. So yeah, it's going to be a good holiday. Seven nights away, I can't wait, but I wish I was going away for three weeks. But end of the day, if I go away three weeks in March, then I can't go away for three weeks from my birthday. So it's like 50-50. And also, I'm staying in a hotel, not a hostel this time. So in the hotel this time, I've got a double room, a double bed to myself. Got my own room to myself, so I'm not sharing with anyone. Got my own bathroom to myself and bath as well. That's a bonus of having a hotel. Thirdly, another bonus is I've got a heated swimming pool as well. We don't have that in hostels. Also, I've got a fridge in my room so I can put my tropical beers and all that and snack in there as well. That's another bonus thing about not staying in a hostel. And also about this hostel, I'm staying right bang on in the town centre. So everything is all in a few minutes walk away. Flicks Bar, karaoke bar is open seven nights a week from 9pm until 2am, seven nights a week. Flicks Bar, karaoke bar in Coleco in Atlantic Centre is open seven nights a week and you will see me up there on my first night when I'm back. That my tradition after watching Harry on Wednesday night, when he finished at 11 o'clock, I normally go straight to Flicks. I normally in Flicks by quarter past 11 until 2 o'clock in the morning. Then I normally go out to Waikiki with my friends from Flicks to celebrate my first night back. But that's my tradition. Will that change this time? We will see what will happen. Time will tell. So yeah, going to be good. Not long to go now. Six weeks and one day to go now into my holiday. I'm going to do that here. Six weeks and one day to go into my holiday. Jeez, I remember it was 12 weeks last time I checked, and now it's only six weeks and one day. Oh my god. Six weeks. Cannot wait. Cannot wait to feel that heat on my skin from the sun. Can't wait to get my suntan back and make all you lot jealous again. <laughs> and just to drink San Maguia, drink tropical beer with Dean and Amanda. Gonna be good. But I would like to go out for three weeks, so it's I'm trying to make my decision. What do I do? Do I go out there for three weeks, not have that luxury and stay in a hostel? Or do I go for seven nights and have that amazing luxury? Mm, who knows? But I know what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go go seven nights and then I'll go away for three weeks. For my birthday, or go in the summer for three weeks. One of the two. I can't have either. I can go in the summer and not go for my birthday. It's up to me after my March holiday, so it's depend. But yeah, I'm just watching the WSL Surf League um, competition right now in Hawaii called Pipeline, one of the best surfing waves in the world. The waves are 8 to 12 foot at the moment, at 15 second ground throw. The waves are pumping right now. Absolute sick, the waves are. See, my mouth is really dry. It's only 21 degrees in my flat, and outside it's only 9 degrees. Wind is coming from the south southeast at 10 miles per hour. <sighs> my flat is only on 18 degrees. 
So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this vlog guys and let me know if you want me to do more vlogs like this. So I, I will catch you all later. Bye for now guys.